Hello chess lovers, Soren here and in this video I want to share with you an interesting game from 2019 Junior Speed Chess Championship. This game is taken from a match played between Iranian chess grandmaster Parham Mahsudlu and Italian chess grandmaster Luca Moroni. The game was played with 3 minutes plus 1 second increment time control and now without further ado, Let's get started with our game and see what happened on the board. Mahsudlu opened up with this flexible g3 move and Moroni responded with knight f6. Bishop g2 d5. I have to tell you that this game is going to end up in a very fantastic way and that's actually the reason that I selected this exact game for you. So white is setting up the king's Indian attack type formation and in return Black is setting up a very solid formation, queen e1. Instead of playing queen e1 in here, white is usually playing knight d2, but in this game we will see that Mahsudla will completely neglect that idea of bringing the knight on d2. h6, knight h4, bishop h7, and this time we have f4, knight d7, knight c3, bishop e7, and e4. Black castles, e5. White is grabbing more space and is cornering black pieces. Knight e8, knight f3, knight c7, and this time we have g4. As you know, Mahsutlu is a very aggressive player, and this game is not an exception. He is launching an immediate attack on the king's side, and at the same time, by playing g4, free to this g3 square for the queen. f6, in return to white's aggression, black is acting against that powerful pawn storm and is trying to break into pieces white pawn structure. It takes f6, bishop takes f6, g5, h takes g5, f takes g5 and bishop takes c3. Not the best move, keeping alive this dark squared bishop could have been better, which could have been useful when organizing the defense and also at the same time the bishop from e7 is putting a useful pressure on g5 but in our game we have bishop takes c3, b takes c3, queen e7 well instead of playing queen e7 it was better to play bishop g6 but in our game we have queen e7 and the problem with this move is that by playing queen g3 white is both attacking this knight and also is threatening to play g6 already black is in trouble that's why Moroni decided to give away his rook in order to free this f8 square for the knight. Rook takes f3 and knight f8, he both covered this g6 square and also protected the knight. Bishop f4. Meanwhile, white is developing his dark squared bishop with a tempo. Knight b5, a4. Yes, white is inviting black to win this pawn, but of course in typical positions, those pawns are not playing essential role. Right now the threat is knight e2 check, that's why. Mahsudlu first played rook e1 and already he wants to play bishop d6 followed by bishop takes f8 and then g6. That's why black played bishop g6, acted against white's threats and we have h4, bishop h5, bishop d6, queen d7, rook f2, knight g6, bishop h3. We have a target on e6 and also at some point, white will get rid of black's light squared bishop in order to free the pawn's path. Rook e8, bishop e5, d4, king h2. A strange move in here, it was better to go for bishop g4 and then bring into life the h5 idea, but in our game we have king h2, queen d5. This is a mistake, instead it was better to play knight d1, if rook d2 only then queen d5. Black is managing to fight back, but in our game we have queen d5 straight away. Now comes bishop d6, though I have to tell you that even at this point bishop g4 is playable. In the end of the day, if you capture on e5, white has this powerful queen f4 move. But in our game we have bishop d6, e5. At this point already black managed to equalize the game, bishop b4 and knight takes a4. Well, this is a move after which black's position goes down without uh, resistance. Instead, it was not too late to bring into life this knight d1 idea. In some lines, this could allow black to secure this e3 outpost for the knight, but in our game we have knight takes a4. Black is grabbing one more pawn, but now finally bishop g4 is on the board after which white pawns are becoming mobile. c5, we have h5, knight f8, bishop d2, queen d6 and g6. 
Just no way to stop white's aggression and white's position is totally winning. Knight d7, bishop g5, knight c3, king h3, knight d5, and there it goes. The rook is penetrating the 7th rank. Knight f6, queen f5, and e4. A desperate attempt, though I have to tell you that at this point there is no defense. If knight takes h5, then white has a very beautiful rook takes g7 move. And if knight takes g7, then queen f7 check is coming, followed by rook h1. White will announce a discovered check and will win. In our game after queen f5, we have e4 and h6. Look at this, guys. White's dominant position simply looks astounding. Knight e3 was played a desperate attempt, but in here, Mahsudlu brought into life a brilliant combination. You can pause the video and try to find his next moves. Ready? In here, Mahsudlu first captured on g7 with a check and after king a8. Did you manage to find the queen sacrifice in your analysis? Ready? This time Mahsudlu captured on f6. He's also offering his queen. Knight takes f5. Well, the engine is suggesting a beautiful line in order to prolong the resistance. The idea of playing queen g3 check is to capture on f5 with a check, but even in this case, Black's position is totally lost. In the end of the day, white can play rook h1 with an imminent mating threat. In our game, we have knight takes f5. Black accepted the queen sacrifice. But let's go back and start the combination from rook takes g7. So we have rook takes g7, king h8, bishop takes f6. Black accepted the queen sacrifice. And we have rook h7 check. And the rook cooperating together with the bishop is managing to checkmate black king. We have it guys, rook a8, brutal checkmate is on the board. A very nice finish I think though, there were some inaccuracies by both sides, but let's not forget that this was a 3 minute game and I'm sure that the final moments of the game were played in a serious time trouble, but anyways, we have a very, very impressive checkmate on the board. Well, in the end, let's also solve a chess puzzle. Please take a look at this position and try to find the winning line for white. I will wait for your answer in the comment section. Thanks for watching. Here are more suggestions for you. Feel free to check them out as well. I will see you in my next video. Take care.